Good, I'm Chris. All right, we're going to talk about some stuff. And, uh, uh uh-oh, are we going to talk about just on the fight again? Why, yes, we are. Uh, So, uh, I mean, you know, I'm only, I only really work on this thing in order to make a demo ready. So, you know, it's a win-win. Fair is fair, you know? So, there we go. And I've got some exciting updates. In fact, these are the updates that I've been wanting to get to uh, since I first made this thing. So, and that would be style mapping. So, for those of us that haven't been uh, attending the past couple of calls, uh, uh, the the general dev here, uh, JSONify is a VS Code extension. I'm going to show that off here. Uh, it allows you to take like an SVG file or an HTML file, and it's going to go ahead and map that to a column format JSON for you. Um, it's going to do some fancy things where it's going to map over elements uh, and styles and give you some default styles and all that's exciting. Uh, but it's also going to do live updates. Uh, which means that as you edit your HTML or SVG file, it's going to update that format, uh, which allows you to use something called SP Formatter, which I'll take a look at in a minute, uh, to do live updates on your site. And wow, 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 it's exciting. And now uh, added support for style elements so that you can define your own classes and so on. And let's see what that looks like. Uh, and again, I mentioned this extension. So this is an extension I'm going to show off as well. Um, I love it. I highly recommend it. It's by Sergey Sergeyev. It is for either Chrome or Microsoft Edge Chromium Edition. Um, and you add that there, and then you add a VS Code extension on top of that, and then you get this kind of live session uh, thing I'm going to show you here. Uh, and not just that, right? That's the, the cool thing I'm showing you here, but you also get awesome IntelliSense and all sorts of other things right in the browser that is far are far better than using the out-of-the-box experience. All right, let's get over here. All right, so let's head back to that uh, site we were looking at before, right? So this is, again, we're trying to appeal to the – to the young horses, the next generation, right? So my daughter do some lovely photos here uh, and put them here. Yes, and they are photos, not drawings. (laughs) Uh, So we have the blood stallions, right? So last time we uh, created this exciting list here called Recipe Tracker, and we're just gonna jump right back to where we were and take off from there. So we have this Recipe Tracker list, and let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like in uh, VS Code. So let's grab this thing and uh, let's just grab that. Ah, There we go, got my window manager, perfect. Okay, and then again, if you haven't gotten it yet, the JSONify here, uh, actually let's make that a little bigger so you can see it, is this extension here, and I'm sure someone will post a link if I don't. It's the bit.ly slash JSONify, and uh, you can check it out. It is free. Wow, wow, wow. All right, let's go over here and come back to our site, and let's take a look. This is the format we had uh, Copilot generate, generated this HTML for us, and then we made a format out of it, so let's go ahead and convert that to the format, and then let's open a new session and let's actually go to up here and let's go to our recipe and we're going to column settings we're going to format this column and then we're going to enable our extension sp formatter oh not post managing chapter sp formatter and i'm going to enable that all right so that should give me this uh if i come down here to advanced mode right there we go so all of those little steps but now i'm connected right and again if you've done this a couple times that's it's pretty straightforward you'll probably have your extension on all 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 by default. I leave it off just so I can show turn it on. It's exciting. So remember we generated this. It did that weird thing with the star. Let's go ahead and fix that. All right. So if we do width, all right, equals like 30 pixels. All right. We can see that. So again, this is showing that idea of we're live updating HTML over here. We're actually updating SVG inside our HTML, which is funny. Um, it's generating the format over here, right? And you can see that it just added that width 30 pixels right there, right? So we wanted to change that to you know, 40 we could, or 34 apparently, that's fine. Right, but that was that idea of those live updates and everything's connected. So there we go. Now we're all caught back up to where we were. Woo woo. All right, I'm gonna make this a little smaller so we can see some stuff. And let's write some other stuff so we can see some of the new features. So goodbye. All right, we're just gonna kill that. It does not refresh because it's not valid anything yet. But as we're typing, it should uh, fix that all together. So let's go ahead and type in our HTML, right? And we're going to type in a, a head, even though we're not going to be using it. And we'll type in our body, right? And you can see it's trying to do some stuff over there, right? So if we typed in, uh, let's take Copilot suggestions, right? So that sounds good. Uh, let's see. Oh, it doesn't like something. Let's just restart the format again. I don't know what I did here. Let's convert it to, oh, it doesn't like it. Head, oh, because I'm writing everything inside a head element. Look at that. That is not proper. Well, that makes sense. All right, so let's try that again as we form it. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got that here, and let's make this, let's get ourselves a little more real estate so we can see it. The idea here, we've got a playground. Wow, wow, thanks, GoPod. That's beautiful. And we can start to do cool things like writing a style. So if we define a style here, we can say our 
special header is our style here. All right, and we'll just put a color of uh, white, right, and a background color of black. Wow, exciting. All right, now we didn't apply that anywhere, and we didn't actually put that inside a style element. <laughs> so let's put that inside a style element, and let's grab that CSS that we just defined. Get rid of that, we're gonna paste that in there. Boom, all right, and let's format this thing, because that is ugly. There we go. Beautiful. Now we haven't actually applied that anywhere, so let's apply it all to our H1 here, and we say this is our class equals the special header. All right, boom. So now our class is automatically applied, and we'll notice there's a few things here um, that are exciting. So all right, we get the special header, and as a result, uh, we get everything that's defined in that special header on here along with, because it's an H1, our default H1 properties, which is what given that automatically size that we would expect. Those are all getting joined together right there and our color is white, our background color is black. Ooh, woo, wow, exciting, right? And we can do things like it doesn't have to just be that, right? Uh, we could add other classes in here, right? So if we wanted to add our, um, you know, MS font color as, a, you know, theme primary, right? And we wanted to do that and say, not do color white, for instance, because that's going to override it, right? We can see that. So we can still pass in our classes one way or the other. And in fact, if we uh, wanted to pass in our, any unnamed, any other, any undefined class will pass in. So random class. This allows you to take advantage of any of the uh, out of the box Microsoft classes. And there are a ton of them. We've got them all listed on our list formatting uh, documentation site. If you go over there. Uh, so there's a ton of these that are all, that are really, really fancy. Uh, but then you can also uh, type in your own class if you're doing some things like where you maybe you've got a, an extension in there that you're picking up on the styles. Uh, you know, I don't know why you do that. Don't do it, maybe, but you could, right? So all that's going to pass through, and that's exciting. And let's go back and let's get rid of this. But we can also uh, go a little further. Like, right? what if we had multiple H1 elements or multiple special headers? Right? We could tag, we could style an H1 element. But what if we had multiple of these and we wanted to style them in multiple places, right? In the past, we'd have to copy these inline styles everywhere, but because we have this, right, we can just copy this the guy and we'll just forget whatever that is. Boom, we'll just paste this here instead of playground. Now we'll say at current field so we can see that it's different, right? So now we got our sausage apples. I apparently moved that theme, right? So let's let's do our, our color is white again, right? So we can see it. But instead of doing that, now we have support up here uh, for both expressions and for theme tokens. So you can see here, if I type in theme white, right? I don't actually get the color white over here. Instead, I actually get this class, MS font color white applied, right? And so then I can do the same thing here for uh, this guy, or I could say, you know, theme is, you know, black or something like that. And you can do that default uh, style. You can use the full the full format all you want, right? But this would allow this to now work nicely inside a, a dark theme, right? You don't have to change anything, and all that's good. Uh, you could even do uh, get a little fancier, right? And you go to my special header, and I can define a hover, right? So you can see it's already trying to do a former, right? So I want to say my color in this case is going to be uh, theme primary. No, oh, I've got to put theme colon theme primary. There we go. And we'll put it in thing. And there we go. Fancy. And we should see, yeah, now we've got a hover class that's over there. Ooh, look at that. And we have it in multiple spots, right? We had to just define it once, and we can use it all over the place, which is really, really exciting. Wow. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that has driven me nuts since the beginning of trying to do list formatting is where you're maybe writing these uh, advanced conditionals or you're writing these styles, and then you end up having to use them all over the place. Right? This is a really simple example, but say maybe you've got uh, a form or something else where you've got you know a, a label and you've got a value, right? And someone comes along and says, "Yeah, it looks okay, but I want all the labels bolded." And you're like, "Ah, I have to go." And it's so hard. I have to add a style and font weight bold to everything. My gosh! Or you could go here and just add it as a class and be done. And so like, oh, magic, right? And use those extra 15 minutes to uh, I don't know, get some horse meat. <laughs> Sorry, it was on the screen. I could I could help read it. All right. Uh, you know, but then you could quickly add things like, you know, cursor, pointer, and so on. Again, you could just easily see as things go, and it becomes much easier to work with. Uh, one thing also is that it does, uh, if we say, like, padding, right, is like four pixels here. All right, so now it's applied, but we came down here, and we were to apply it inline, right? So we were to say style equals, and we say border as a one pixel solid 
red, right? Something like that. And we, let's make that 10 pixels or five pixels, make it obvious, right? So we've added some inline styles, but we could also add like our padding, um, you know, is, is eight pixels instead now, right? So now you can see over here, it's fighting through that, right? And it's got, uh, I don't even know where we are on this thing. If we go up here to playground, see it's pulling the pixels, the border, uh, up here, it's pulling that from the inline styles. It's pulling the padding from the inline styles rather than pulling it from the class. As soon as we moved it from the inline styles here, all right, we'll see that it pulls it from the class. So, wow, wow. So it has some idea of specificity. It's not quite the same thing. Like this isn't a browser, so it's not following all of the rules. It's largely just doing layerings, right? So things are defined in order, uh, but inline styles always win. Uh, because again, that matches formatting. Now we are doing some fancy things where if you set your output to JSONify, um, you can come in here and you can see things like if you add a bad element, right? So let's add donkey, right? It'll tell you, yeah, that's not an element that is is mapped over, right? So it's just not coming over. So you do get some nice warnings here. Um, you also get things like uh, if you're defining stuff uh, poorly or you're defining things that don't exist, right? For instance, maybe you wanted to use a perfectly normal CSS class of rotate, right? Uh, you can't uh, because that is not whitelisted by uh, formatting. So rather than try and map that over for you, just for you to find out it doesn't work, right? We're going to go ahead and flag it and not map it for you. And then you'll cry and you'll be sad. But at the same time, uh, you'll be glad to know that it didn't come over. So as people are doing this, uh, it's very exciting. And there you go. And uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else to show you here. That's it for now. Uh, but go check it out. It is free over there in the VS Code Marketplace. Uh, so check out JSONify. Again, that's bit.ly slash JSONify, and we'll post that in the chat. And that's all I got for now. Wow-wee!